This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. I'm Chad Brown from the Reptile Report. You know who this guy is. We're continuing our Southern California Reptile Tour. We're at the Reptile Zoo in Fountain Valley. You're watching Snake Bites. Let's go check it out. What's hey, up, Jay? Hey, what's up, Chad? Good to see you, man. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing, dude? Well, yeah, pretty good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're here to learn about all about the reptile zoo and all this awesomeness you got going here. Well, like, uh, you know, basically, this is my little fantasy dream here. Dude, we converted, uh, you know, half the store into a reptile zoo, and we're actually got an expansion plan, which is pretty cool. We're about halfway done with it, but even already, we got our alligator enclosure in, and we got giant snapping turtle. We even have a movie star here, Mr. Kipling from uh, Disney <laughs> That's Channel. Great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, how long has the zoo been here? Uh, the zoo is exactly five years, almost to the wow. day. That's so fantastic. We opened up five years ago. <laughs> so, so, over the course of the five years at the zoo, I mean, thousands and thousands of kids have come through here and, and touched reptiles for the first hundreds time. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands. That's amazing. <laughs> that, so, you're doing good work then. Yeah, I love what I do, and it doesn't change no matter how long I've been doing it. So. Well, hey, we're here to see some animals. Let's see what you got. Okay, let's check let's it out, go. man. Let's go. We got lots of cool stuff. What's the name of the two-headed rat snake that calls the reptile zoo its home? A. Thelma and Louise. B. Laurel and Hardy. C. Abbott and Costello. Go ahead and answer in the comments down below, and check back later in the show to see if you have the right answer. For this week's Reptile Report, we'll be highlighting venomous snakes. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Let me show you one of my favorites. This guy right here. This is oh a big, goodness. this is actually the last thing we got. It's an alligator snapping turtle. Oh my goodness. That's a monster. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's that a bummer. Is oh What's my god. Look at that sucker. Wow. <laughs> That's one bad dude right yeah, there. He is. He is Do, uh, awesome. Do me a favor, Chad. Don't get your hand in there. Yeah. <laughs> hand below. Down above. He's waiting for a handout. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no pun intended. <laughs> Speaking of hands, look at these claws. This man. huge. Look at his he back is, feet. He is amazing. So anyway, this is one of our newest additions. Mm -hmm. And uh <laughs> I dig them. Yes. Oh I'm not, God. I'm not, you know, I'm not really a turtle guy, but I am. Oh I like yeah, big, cool amazing. things. I like big croc monitors, big giant retics. Right. This guy's getting heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone, want to take over? Yeah, sure. Turn, Brian. You got it. All right. Oh Just keep going. Don't have to go to the gym now. Don't drop him. Uh, Don't drop him. <laughs> he's heavy, huh? Yeah, yeah, this thing let me know when you switch, He's over man. a buck and a half, so he's a over, you know, well over 150 pounds. Tell me where this thing came from. I mean, you, you got it recently. Where did, where did it come from? You know, from? I got it from a show, a reptile show back east. And the guy had it for quite a while and decided that he wanted to get rid of it. And I was like, yes, I'm into this. Oh and of course, the gators, the gators have learned to respect them. Mm -hmm. When they first put him in here, he would be eating and they'd come want to champ on it. Right. <laughs> they grew out of that quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only well, takes one or two shots. And they're done. So I was a little bit worried for the gators, but you know, in real life, they live together. Sure. It's a natural environment. They got, you know, relatively natural. They got the rock hides, they got land, and honestly, they get a they, get, they know whose food's who, and everything goes good. Tell so, me a little bit about the gators in here. Uh, you know, the Darth over there is our famous gator. We had him named on, we basically made a YouTube video, oh, okay. Facebook, the social media named him. So he's he, Darth Gator one with Darth. us. Hands classic, down. right, classic, <laughs> classic. And uh, he's the biggest one we got, but amazingly enough, not, none of these gators here are about, I don't think Mort's more than about four years old. So I gotta know, can I get inside here or what? You know, you can enter at your own risk. The okay. truth of the matter is, is they're actually really tame gators, but they're really food responsive. This is their place where they get fed right. in. And anything that goes in, they think's fair game. Right. And uh, if they figure out that you're not food, then you're good. Well, that's <laughs> the thing, I think with crocodilians, they have an understanding. Their territory Absolutely. and your territory. When they think it's their territory, it's game on. Absolutely the so. truth. So, but hey, you know what? <laughs> so I will go seriously. All right, that's later. Let, let's go look at some. Other Come on, stuff. I'm going to show you guys one of my one of my favorite chameleons. Parsons chameleons are one of the largest chameleons on the planet. 
and this one sure was a beauty. But one of the coolest things about chameleons is that long tongue and the way that they feed. And we're about to see a pretty good example of that. Bam! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's his native food, by the way. Madagascar hissing cockroaches. What we have here is a Baron's Racer. Now, these are really interesting animals that come from South America. They're a rear fang venomous animal, but as you can see, they're typically extremely placid and rarely will bite. And even if they do, you typically get some mild swelling, maybe some nausea, so they're really not that bad. They're the largest colubrid down in South America, getting up to 10 feet in length, but typically they're only gonna get about six or seven feet. But the thing that I absolutely love about them is that little nose appendage. Much much like the rhino rats. Now what's interesting is the males will stay much smaller and typically won't have nearly as much of a nose piece to them. And the females typically have nice long ones like that. And again, that's gonna attract prey because these are extremely arboreal snakes that spend all their time up in the trees. This is just gonna basically attract birds to come along and little lizards, and they're gonna nail them when they think that that might be a little worm or some kind of a leech. Truly a cool snake. What we have here is the mangrove snake. Now these are another rear fang venomous animal. And this guy seems to have a little bit of an attitude, so I have to make sure that I'm keeping him kind of attached to my hand and not towards my face. Because trust me, I don't want to take a bite by even a mildly venomous snake to the face. Now these are actually Boega dendrophilia. They come from Southeast Asia, and it's that black and yellow pattern that makes them such spectacular animals. They're typically known as cat-eyed snakes. They spend the majority of the time in the trees. Again, these guys are gonna eat lizards, birds, and sometimes even other snakes. But there's certainly some spectacular animals. I tell ya, I don't wanna take a bite from this guy, but man, I'm really enjoying playing with him. Now he's coming around, you gotta be really careful. You can see he's starting to get a little bit more attentive, but that tongue is going pretty quick, so he's thinking, what's going on here? Whew, what a beautiful animal. Brian's been showing you some rear fang species of snakes. When people think of lizards, they don't think of venomous, but there are two species of venomous lizards on the planet, the Mexican beaded lizard and these guys, Gila monsters, native to the southwest part of the United States. These are an awesome species of lizard, super easy to care for in captivity. In fact, would make an ideal pet because they're almost bulletproof, other than the fact that they're venomous. In the wild, they eat nestling rodents, uh, newly hatched birds. They're pretty slow moving, so they're not gonna catch too many things out in the wild, but in captivity, they do just fine on a diet of mice. Uh, very difficult to breed consistently in captivity. At Pro Exotics, we bred them for a number of years, but we were lucky if we got 50% of our eggs to hatch. Um, there are two different subspecies of Gila monsters. This is a reticulated type. There's also a banded type, which is more highly prized in captivity for its strong, crisply banded pattern. Uh, again, a beautiful animal would make an ideal pet if they weren't venomous. So this is the famous Mrs. Kipling, huh? Hey, hey, don't even go there. He's Mr. Kipling to me, but Mrs. he's a really Kipling. cool lizard. I've had him. He was actually, he's actually carries a gene for... Right. Uh, Sulfur. Correct. Right. Actually, I've never bred him, but I bred his uh, sisters. Okay. And I'm gonna go grab one of the sisters if you wanna take him right there. Absolutely. Yeah, so sulfur monitors are actually uh, an Asian water monitor, but how, it's a color that mutation, oh, and that gives you an idea what one of these looks like. Holy <laughs> cow. That thing is gorgeous. Is that huh? ridiculous or what? So this, when I said go get her, this is actually a him, and this is a, from Mr. Kipling's uh, sister. So this is a nephew. Right. This is this is one of their first ones, and I was really happy with the outcome. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, animal. absolutely beautiful genetics. So these are just these are just water monitors. You know, we're calling them by their TV names, Mr. and Mrs. That's Kipling, right. or Sulfur is their morph name. These are just regular old Indonesian water monitors. Correct. Big, giant, beautiful, tame lizard. Captive-born water monitor are incredible pets. Oh yeah, when you can really tame them out. I mean, they, they have a few defenses here. I mean, these these claws are really powerful. Uh, you certainly never so want to sharp. get bit. And then they certainly have another pretty nasty thing that they can do to you too. <laughs> yeah. That may not scar you. <laughs> except emotionally <laughs> and that's they can just dump on you i mean it's absolutely amazing the amount of waste little, that they oh, can there's have. a little a little fact about him when he goes to set they have a rule he has to be out of his cage and he has to make his make his move before he's allowed on set 
Okay, so you got the large sulfur monitors. Correct. The largest species of python in captivity. Absolutely. Ever Obviously, you like the large reptiles. Well, I, I, I guess I'm trying to offset for something, but <laughs> I love big animals. I won't, I won't, okay, I won't go there. You can probably sell sulcata's large tortoises. I, lo I love galops. All right, so what do you think about the public, the general public? The large general public. Large water monitors, big retics, large tortoises. Well, I don't think large dogs are for everybody. Right. I don't think large anything's for everybody. And I think at the end of the day, I don't think motorcycles are for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so we all have choices in life. And I think that really what this comes down to, this whole argument, is how much people can control our lives. And I think that when my hobby doesn't conflict in your life, I really think it's out of line for people to write laws. This is another rear fang venomous snake that's endemic to South America. It's called a false water cobra. And the reason it's called a false cobra is because it has the same ability to flatten its neck out, kind of like a cobra. Now, of course, they do this to make themselves look larger to predators, so it's a really cool defense mechanism. Now, what's interesting about these guys is that it's different than, say, the cat eye snakes, is that these have round pupils because they're a diurnal animal, which typically just means that they spend the majority of their time roaming around during the day and not at night. Now these guys will typically feed on other snakes, lizards, and coarse birds, not to mention any other mammal that comes along its way. Their venom is relatively mild, and even if you do get bit, the only way that they can inject that venom is if they really chew on you because the delivery system is in the back teeth, which means they gotta get a really good nab on you and typically that's not gonna happen. And as you can see, this thing is puppy dog tame. This Jabba the Hutt looking thing is an African bullfrog from South Africa, also known in the pet trade as the pixie frog. We always think of pixies as being small, but this thing is huge. It eats whatever it can fit into its mouth. These guys will puff themselves up full of air when they're frightened to make themselves appear even bigger. It's a great pet for someone who doesn't have a whole lot of space is not interested in a lot of interaction between them and their pet. As you can see, pixie frogs just sit there. The African bullfrog, about as big as a frog gets. What we have here is a Madagascan tree boa, or Sanzinia madagascarinensis, obviously endemic to Madagascar. These guys will typically obviously live up in the trees and they're also a live bearer, having up to 10 babies, but more typically six or eight, pretty big ones. But what's really cool about them is the fact that when they're born, they're bright red and absolutely stunning animals. Not that they're bad as adults either. This happens to be a mandarin phase. And I just love that really triangular head that they have. I tell you what, if you came across this animal in the wild, you would certainly probably think it was a venomous snake. Here at the Reptile Zoo, everyone's familiar with all the big retics. This is another species of python, although much smaller. This is a New World burrowing python, the only species of python from the New World. These guys are from uh, South America, and as you can see, they don't get nearly the same size as the retics. They've got this awesome, shiny iridescence to them, and those occasional white scales that you see, those aren't scars, those aren't piebald markings. That's part of the natural coloration of, of this species. Uh, the Latin name on these guys is Loxosemus by color. Uh, one of the coolest pythons, but definitely one of the most unknown and uh, underappreciated pythons within the pet trade. If you're looking for something small and really cool and, and rare, this is a species I can highly recommend. Jay, dude, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, man. The Reptile Zoo is absolutely incredible. Well, I'll tell you, I love what I do, and I tell you, I love showing it to people who love reptiles. And and this is my thing, so. You've done an awesome job. This, <laughs> this is an amazing facility. You should be quite proud of what well, you've accomplished here. Well, it's strictly ran on passion. <laughs> Good job, so, man. Peace, yeah, peace out, you. dude. It's nice seeing you guys, yep. and I hope to see you again. See the show. Take All care. right, see you, man. One of the things that's really amazing about my job, running around the world, just kind of looking at really cool places like this, is that I get to see awesome animals almost every single day. And I gotta be honest with you, growing up my dream was to have a zoo or a place like this that's just a bunch of really cool animals, a private zoo. So it's always awesome to travel 
and get to see these types of environments, whether it's captive breeding of snakes or seeing them just in their wild environment. So places like this are even cooler to me because, you know, it's all about the education. The fact that kids can come in here and sometimes the very first time that they've ever had interaction with animals happens to be in a place just like this. Then they're gonna go home and they're gonna talk to their parents at the table, talking about how cool it was to see those reptiles or those animals and start to learn about them. That's what it's really about instilling the passion into the youth of the future when it comes to wildlife. What's the name of the two-headed rat snake that calls the reptiles to its home? If you said A, Thelma and Louise, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed showing it to you. Go ahead and check out the link in the description. It's a pretty cool place. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Till next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Oh, shit. <laughs> now we're entering the land of the crocodile. It was impressive to see these crocodilians in naturalistic exhibits from across the globe. Naturally heated water pours from the ground through the limestone. This is ABTV.